Hi guys, welcome back to SNT Networks. In today's video, we will be discussing about another interview question, right? Which is usually asked and uh, which was asked by one of my, you know, uh, which was asked to one of my friends recently in an interview. So, uh, if it's a very basic, basic OSPF question. So, uh, you know, so if you know about the basics of OSPF, this question will not be much. But uh, usually these type of questions are asked, you know, when you're uh, deep into a conversation about, uh, you know, any other routing protocol or BGP or, uh, you know, any security SD-WAN parameter. And uh, immediately they'll just put out this question to, you know, make sure uh, you're sort of confused or something, right? But uh, if you are very clear about the basics, then it will not be an issue whatsoever. So, uh, you know, coming to the question. So, uh, the question is, if there are three routers, R1, R2 and R3, correct? If R1 is connected to R2 and, uh, you know, if R1 is connected to R2 and R2 is connected to R3 directly, correct? So we have three routers. So this is connected to this one. This one is connected to this one, correct? But R1 and R3 are not connected directly. So these two are not connected directly. So and OSPF is basically enabled in R1 and R3, but not in R2. Okay. So OSPF is enabled in R1 and R3, but not in R2. Okay. So will R1, so only OSPF is enabled in this one and this one. Correct. So will R1 and R2, uh, but not in this one. No OSPF here. So we'll just simplifying the question here. No OSPF here. So will r1 and r3 be connected via ospf will they be connected in ospf so uh, you know the simple answer to this one here would be you know uh, so ospf is enabled here and ospf is enabled here so <clears throat> simple answer here is first there are few requirements for ospf okay the first requirement would be be directly connected Let me just write it properly. So, yeah, the first requirement is be directly connected. Okay. The second requirement, just to clear this, it's a link state protocol. Okay. With that itself, you can say that we need it directly connected. Okay. The third one is, uh, you know, because it's that it's not areas where you can uh, talk about virtual links correct but it's they they all will be in the same area correct so ospf has to be enabled in the same area okay then you can say um, you know in the same routers correct will have matching ospf parameters such as hello dead timers and authentication which is required so here we can say that since it's not enabled in this the lsa's or uh, you know it cannot forward what all uh, you know lsa ones basically to mint or to create or to maintain neighborship correct so it will not forward once it's sent it from here it will be uh, because for ospf we have a particular uh, multicast ip okay uh, so we have a particular multicast ip for OSPF and this and uh, the router R1 and R3 are listening to that IP. Okay, so we can say that uh, you know we have two multicast IPs, 224.0.0.5 and .6. Okay, this will be used by all OSPF routers to create neighborship, and this will be used by for all uh, you know basically for uh, DR and VDR. Correct. That's a different part whatsoever. So basically this will not have this will this router will not listen to dot dot five correct dot five dot six and it will drop the package directly because of that what happens is there will not be any neighborship between r1 and r3 correct so they will remain isolated and there will not be any neighborship in uh, you know uh, ospf neighborship between r1 and r3 this is a very simple question and direct answer so that you know you guys don't get confused in interviews and know what to say so i hope this was clear thank you